Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. I am here with Dino Katsimetis. Dino, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. And you actually did pretty good on my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. A little bit of practice before we went live. So um, again, thank you for being so generous with your time. And congratulations on building such an incredible mortgage business. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. So for our listeners, before we get into systems and processes, can you give us a little bit of your background? How'd you get into the mortgage business and how did you grow to be at the level that you're at now? Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I used to be in the clothing business, actually, and, and I had five retail stores uh, in my early 20s, and I was driving around an awful lot. And then when I got out of that business, I, I just, I always loved real estate. I always wanted to be, so I wanted to get into real estate. I was going to be a real estate agent. And a friend of mine was in the mortgages back when it was uh, 125%, you know, the value second mortgages. And he's like, dude, you got to try mortgages. And, and I thought about it and I was like, man, I'm so tired of driving everywhere. And back then realtors drove everybody everywhere. And I thought sitting in a, sitting in an office at a desk, sounds appealing at this point, like I'm tired. And, and I just randomly made a switch just because, and never like, I wasn't like fascinated with finance or anything like that. None of that ever really appealed to me, but I somehow did it. And, and then uh, it really turned out to be an incredible business. And, you know, sometimes I wonder like, what would it have been like to be a realtor at Starbucks, right? Most of the, most of the days, but it's turned out to be an incredible Incredible journey. So I'm happy with the decision. That is amazing. Well, whoever that was, I think they deserve a gift from you. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so uh, fast forward to today, what does the team look like? What does the business look like? Yeah. Um, so on my personal team, I have a call them production managers. Um, one can call them LOAs as well. So they, they actually handle everything for me. Um, the, the, I have that those two. I have my personal assistant, which handles literally everything for me. I was even thinking, like, gosh, one day when I retire, I don't know if I'll ever want to get rid of her. <laughs> She'll always be a part of it. And uh, and then I have a, a personal processor as well. So the 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 bulk of it is the the production managers. Um, I used to take every single phone call, like the initial consultation. I would take detailed notes and then I'd push it off to them and, and they would, they would run with it from there. Um, as of January 1st, I, of 2023, I stopped taking the initial phone calls too. So I'm, I'm literally for the first time in 25 years, stepping back mm -hmm. and, and I'm not even taking those initial calls and I've trained them how to do that now. And, and quite honestly, they're doing a great job. Um, so it's been a, a really like just, a game-changing year for me um, in doing personal things that I, I have never done before, like taking my son to basketball practice at four o'clock in the afternoon, which four o'clock might as well have been midday for me before, you know, mm -hmm. um, having a, a calendar that that's mine instead of somebody else's. It's cool. It's been great. That's amazing, but terrifying for most listeners listening to this. Yep. Letting go of the initial application, the initial touch point with the client, I think is where I see most loan officers stall at that. They'll just never break through that ceiling because that's the one thing that people won't let go of in the business. So I'm interested in mentally, what did you go through to get there? Was there a catalyst where it was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to make a change. What, what, what? triggered you in order to finally jump off and build that on the way down? Yeah. So great question. And I'll tell you, um, I was, I, I was one of those people, um, terrified to let go of that, that one piece. Cause I was so good at it. And, and I figured, and I slowly let go of all these other things. Right. But it was like that one last thing. And I kind of viewed it as that was the most important piece. Right. Cause if you don't lock them in, on that first phone call, then it's over. And, um, and I ended up, 
uh, last year in July, I ended up getting double vision and I, I actually didn't work for three months. So for the first time I had to let go because I just, I couldn't look at a monitor. I couldn't look at a piece of paper or drive or do anything without seeing double. And, and they had to jump in and take over for me. And quite honestly, it was like, it was the, the force of the arm twisting that was required for me to let go. And, and then when I came back, it took about three months for my site to come back. But when I, when I came back, I came back, I started taking some calls and I, I realized that there's no reason uh, they're doing a great job and I don't need to go right back into the same old routine. Um, and I also decided at that point that I, I didn't want to work as many hours as I had always worked. Yeah. So I, from that moment, I kind of said, I'm now semi-retired. And when I say semi-retired, all I mean is that I'm working 25 to 30 hours a week, as opposed to 60 plus hours a week. And lo and behold, everything's still getting done and even more efficiently. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? The, so did you notice, because I know that people are going to listen to that and they'll go, okay, well, that's fine for him. But if I do it, the sky is going to fall. Yep. Did you, did you lose deals? Do you feel that you lost business as a result of that transition? Yeah. So yes and no, no, um, I didn't, but at the same time, did I lose a few? Yeah. And, but I also have, I also gained a whole bunch of others and I gained a whole bunch of freedom yeah. that is way more important than a few deals. And quite honestly, I mean, when we look at the reviews, we still, we have never had anything less than a five-star review and nothing's changed since they're not talking to me anymore. They're, <laughs> we're still getting five-star reviews. The guys are doing fantastic, you know? And, and I think a big, a big piece of it for everybody to, to really understand is that the sky will fall if you don't prepare for it, right? Like if, if you don't have a team, the sky will fall because who's going to do it? Yeah. If you have a team, but you don't train them how to do it, the sky will fall because again, you haven't trained them. So it's something that I believe everybody should gear up for. Um, and I think that everybody should, you know, make an effort to slowly let go of things so they can, they can get there. You don't have to do it all at one time, right? You, you gotta, but you gotta first get a team. A lot of guys don't even have a team yeah. and without a team, you're never going to be able to let go because there's nobody to do it for you. Right. And, and that starting your team is really the hardest part because what, when's the right time? How many deals do I have to be doing? You know, what, what are they going to do that I can't do faster? You know, all these different things that go into your mind. And, and at the, at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of people out there that can do things better than you. Yep. You just have to give them a chance to, and even if they can't, it's okay. If you build a system and a system is what's really important here. If you build a system, then it will happen and it'll happen nicely. But if you don't make the effort, take a step back, build a system, right? If you don't make that effort, then you'll never ever get there. From knowing what you know now and all of the mistakes that you've made along the way, what does your system look like now? And if you were starting over again, what's the first hire that you would make? And then subsequently, how would you build the team? Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll answer that with if I had to start over today, because years ago it was done a little different, right? So, so with today's technology that we have and today's way of doing things, um, there's, there's a few different things. So Number one, and not everybody would agree with me on this, but my personal assistant, I think is probably the most valuable because even though she doesn't do very much that has to do with loans, she clears up enough of my BS tasks of the day that I can focus on loans, yeah. right? So I think that part is huge for somebody that doesn't have a team that's starting fresh. 
hire somebody that can go through all of your emails, get rid of your emails, get rid of that, that minute by minute obsession of checking your emails. Don't get me wrong. I know they're important, right? That's how we communicate. Everything is there, but let somebody else delete all the crap that that's there. Let somebody else respond to certain things and, and line things up for you. That few hours a day that you can now refocus on production or, you know, building a relationship with somebody is way more valuable. It'll make you way more money. It goes back to what, how much are you making per hour? Right. And, and if, and if you are making any kind of serious money per hour, why are you doing stupid things that are wasting your production, right? Time. So let somebody else do that stuff. That's the first hire I would make. Um, so for example, my personal assistant, she goes through all my emails. Um, every time I've trained all my agents, when we get a referral, it has to be via email. So they email the referral or text message, but we prefer email. She responds to it, not me. Um, she sets up the appointment for them. And now it's not even to me, but it's to my production manager. Right? So she sets up those appointments. She follows up with it. Um, she puts on her calendar. If they don't respond, then you know, she follows up. She does all that. She pays all my personal bills. Um, if I need something, just like lunch, right? Like if I didn't bring my lunch and I feel like in and out today, well, she'll go to in and out, whatever it is, right? I hope my, my wife will never listen to this podcast, by the way. So uh, Mother's Day, right? Like she went and picked out the Mother's Day cards. <laughs> so all that stuff takes away all of the, the, the extra little things I have to think about. So as long as it gets done, that's the important gets done. part. Absolutely. So the personal assistant and then the rest of the team grows from there. That is um, incredibly valuable. So switching gears a little bit, we've got a tremendous amount of production that comes into your office. And I'm very interested, and our listeners always want to know, where is the main driver of your business coming from? How are you getting deals in through the door, especially in today's marketplace? Where does the majority of your business come from? Yeah, so the, I would still have to say the, the real estate agents is the, the number one referral source. Um, you know, there's, there's some from financial planners, some from CPAs, some from random, you know, attorneys and various things like that. But, but the bulk is still real estate agents. And then the, the second and, and really kind of edging closer is the, the past database, right? So if you don't have a database that you're keeping up with regularly and doing things to love on them, then you're missing out big time because that's that's really the wealth of your future is sitting right there. Real estate agents are where you have to begin because at the end of the day, if you don't have a database, you got to start somewhere. And and you know, I always say the real estate agents are out there hunting for our food on a daily, right? So sometimes I hear loan officers talk about how much I hate real estate agents. They're this, that, and it's like. How do you hate them? They're out there hunting every single day. You better start loving on them because they're the ones that give you your food. And, yep. and if you hate them, it's probably because you're doing a really terrible job at what you do. So they're stressed out because you're not giving them correct information. You're not doing the things you're supposed to do on time. You're not doing something. And, and if they're still terrible because you and you are doing everything right, then just find yourself a new referral partner. <laughs> There's far more of them than there are of us. Yeah. So um, talking about loving on those relationships, the database and the realtors, I guess let's start, let's start with the realtor side of things. So um, a, I mean, at your size now, are you still actively out recruiting for new real estate agents? No, um, I'm not. But, but what's interesting is that they come now, you know, once mm -hmm. you build it, they will come and it's true. Um, they'll they'll come to you, but a lot of that has to do with once you start doing more volume, you naturally fall upon more, and then they're impressed with how you do everything, and and they actually want to work with you. So 
So I'm, I'm fortunate now, like I had a young guy kind of ask me and I, and I, and I had to think cause I, I couldn't remember. It's been so long since I've had to go out and actively like hunt for, you know, a referral partner. Um, but you know, we've, we've built quite the machine now and in that machine allows us to attract them to come to us as well without us having to go to them. I, I've always said like the worst thing you could do is go into a meeting with a brand new referral partner and say, hi, my name is Dino. I do loans, you know, with a great smile and I got great service and I got great rates and, you know, I'm available 24 seven. And it's like, gosh, no, 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 no. You're not giving any value whatsoever to them or to yourself, you know? So you, you have to come up with a, a value add that actually will help grow their business. Yeah. If you can't help grow their business, you have, you're not offering them anything. It, you know, five-star service should be the minimum that we always offer. Doing our job and doing it on time is always the minimum. How can you do better? That's, that's where you can build your business. And that's how they will come to you because you'll build that reputation quickly once you start doing that. The goal should never be to close on time. The goal should always be to call up early and say, we're, we're done. How about we all close a little early, you know, a week early. That, that should be the goal. That is, so that our, is incredible. Our value add to the realtors is a couple of things. The first one is, you know, in a, it, it works best in a tough market because that's how you can stand out. But basically a 15-day close of escrow, uh, zero loan contingencies, and, um, and a, a $250 a day penalty per diem paid by us to the seller if we, if we close late for any reason. That's the value add. And if you do that, you'll notice your realtors won't have to go out and write offer after offer after offer to get one accepted, right? You're, you're at the top of the list every single time, as long as your offer price is within range. Oftentimes, you know, the seller, the seller obviously always wants the, the highest price, but sometimes they need out of there quicker or they need a, an assurance that it's going to close, right? So a, a five to $10,000 variation in price sometimes isn't that big of a deal if you can close in two weeks. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you this, that if you have an escrow that's due to close in two weeks and a week into it, you run into a problem, you're more likely to be able to solve that problem collectively because there's only a week left. First of all, the hmm. sellers have already taken time off work. The sellers have already started packing, right? The sellers are, are pretty motivated. So if there's a small issue, first, the sellers are way more motivated because there's only a week left and they're, they're this close to moving out. And number two, as much as the realtors might hate hearing this, they're a week from getting their commission. Yep. They are very motivated at that point to finish this deal. And it might kick in that extra thousand bucks or 2000 bucks in order to, to make this thing work, you know, versus if it was a 30 day escrow a week into it, you run into a problem. Well, you got three weeks left in that escrow period. There's a lot that can happen there. So they, they might just decide to start over. Huh? You know, that, that has never been brought up by anybody on any of our episodes. And that is an incredibly valuable tool to have in your yeah. mortgage business. It is. And you know, and if you can't close in, in two weeks, then you, you got to figure out what you're doing wrong because there's no yeah. reason why you can't be. Maybe you need to move to a different, a different company or start a different approach, or maybe just change your own mindset because there's no reason. Yeah. Now you mentioned, I believe it was $150 a day that you will pay to the other side. Is that a guarantee that you give with every deal? It's 250, 250 a day. We, we give it as a guarantee on every deal and we'll personally pay the seller if that happens. I've only had to pay twice uh, in how many years, you know, I mean, years, over 10 years I've been doing that and uh, I've only had to pay twice. And, and you know what, even if I had to pay, if we got the deal in escrow because of it, who cares? Yep. You know, because Granted, the market's a little different now, but let's just say for the last several years, the market's been on fire. Shouldn't even get an offer accepted. Well, yeah. 
we were getting our very first offers accepted 70% of the time. It's not bad. That's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Wow. And, and because of that, the realtors actually would say, if you don't work with Dino, then we won't represent you because it's a waste of time. You only have five or 10% down your credit scores. Yeah. Sure. 720, but somebody else is going to offer more money. Somebody else has a better credit score. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. So if you can't stand out in the crowd and, and, you know, the guarantee is what makes you stand out in the crowd, you know, plus there's other stuff we do on the back end. And, you know, I always hear realtors say, or uh, lenders say, uh, you know, we, well, we always call the listing agent say, okay, so everybody calls the listing agent now, you know, what else? And, and what we do is we do more of a bomb bomb video and, you know, we actually connect, right? Like we, we look up here and we, we connect with the listing agent and then we show them some of the back end of what we've done, uh, where the debt ratio is at. If it doesn't appraise, we have a strategy in place. Let me show you what, you know, what that is. We've already discussed it with the, the buyer so they understand, you know, uh, we use a local appraisal management company, not a big national one. We don't have issues like other people do with their appraisal. So what we do is we take that time to number one, connect, and number two, to, to address all of their fears, all of their concerns up front. So when it comes time for them to choose, you know, it's, it's Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, I did such a great job for you. Look at all the, all the offers I got on your property. Oh my gosh, Mr. or Mrs. You know, listing agent, you're amazing. You know, which ones do you recommend? And then, you know, let's face it, which ones is he going to recommend? I think it's going to be the one that gets him a paycheck in two weeks, guaranteed, right? Not the one that's 30 days with 17 day contingencies and yada, yada, yada. That's the one he's going to pick because a five or $10,000 difference in price isn't going to mean anything in his commission. That's, that's nothing. Exactly. Closing in two weeks, that's, that's marketing opportunity for him. Hmm. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So as you, as you close those transactions, what are you doing to nurture the relationship with the realtors so that you continue to get their business and you continue to get that goodwill within the market? Yeah. So, um, that's where, that's where our magic really happens. And, and I love how you said, when you close that, how are you nurturing them? And I'll tell you, it doesn't start when we close it. It starts when we get them. Hmm. So as soon as we get them and we, we pre-approve them, we send them out a gift right away. And it's uh, all our gifts come in these blue boxes and it says, hashtag, who can we serve today on them? Because that's our, our motto. Like, who can we serve? And the first one is what we call our chill pill box. And it's, it's basically a, a metal head scratcher for your, you know, your scalp. Um, it's got a couple packets of Tylenol in it. And we have these, uh, we fill up these little plastic baggies, uh, put a sticker on it that says chill pill, and we fill them with M&Ms. Oh, and, cool. and we have a letter in there that says, you know, buying a house can be stressful. There's a lot of stuff going on. But if you find yourself getting stressed out, don't sweat it. You got the right team working for you. Um, but go ahead and give yourself a scalp massage and try and, and relax. If that doesn't work, take some Tylenol and, and, you know, let it go. If that doesn't work, take a chill pill and call me in the morning. And it just starts off everything the right way. Now, keep in mind, we just spoke to somebody. They sent us in their paperwork. We gave them a pre-approval with all the fancy stuff, right? And we get the, the next morning, they get this box on their doorstep. If they happen to be talking to somebody else still, which I doubt at that point, but if they are, they're going to have to decide who do they like better. Yep. The guy that said, here's a link, go ahead and fill out this application or the guy that you spoke to, because we don't do that. We speak to them yep. um, and, and we speak to them for 20 to 30 minutes and really connect with them, ask them important questions. And then we give them this celebratory approval. And then they get this box the next morning. If there's a comparison in any way, we always win. So it starts there, not after you finish, right? And the other thing to, to think about is 
the most important time or best opportunity to get a referral from somebody is while they're in the thick of it. Yeah. Because while they're in the thick of it, that's all they think about. All they think about is buying a house. I always use the example, a couple can be in a, in a, a really crowded, loud restaurant and they could barely hear each other. Five tables away, they're talking about a kitchen remodel and somehow, ding, they hear that. Why? Because that's what is interesting and interesting to them at that moment, right? So same with buying a house. The opportunity to strike is while it's hot. And, and that starts early on. Never wait until the end when you've proven to do a good job. Have enough confidence in yourself that you've proven uh, just right out of your right out of the gate with your first conversation, you proved to them that you're better than everybody else, right? Ask for referrals up front. So every time we send a gift, we ask for a referral. Politely, classy, not, you know, here's a paper, write down five names, right? Never like that. And, and because of that, we get a ton of referrals from our past database. So, so anyways, that's when the nurturing starts. And then when they go into escrow, they immediately get another gift with three bottles of champagne, three opportunities to celebrate. One's right now, you just got your new home. Two is when you're signing the loan documents because you know it's almost done. And three is when the realtor hands you the keys to your brand new home. Um, and then they get another one right before signing loan documents, another one just before funding. And then after funding, they immediately get their first one within like two days after funding. And then they get another one within 30 days. They get another one in three months, six months, nine months, one year anniversary. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's extensive, but it works. Our database has grown significantly because of it. And our referral you know, production from our past database has just skyrocketed. That, and so, so many questions. So are are you fulfilling that in-house? Is it your team that sends the boxes out or are you using uh, like a mailing house to, in order to ship those out? Yeah, so I have it in-house. Uh, my assistant actually does it for the whole company. And I, the control side of me wants it done so everything will go out in the same blue box um, that says hashtag who can we serve today with the right letters, with everything, right? In the beginning, I, it was like, hey, this Amazon Prime thing, free shipping is awesome. Yeah. But I realized I'm better off personalizing it and doing it myself. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that is a lot of work, right? And, and it's, not, it's not cheap because we get personalized boxes, personalized everything. So it, it actually adds quite a bit. So unless you're ready for that, I would highly recommend a company called Client Giant, just clientgiant.com. Uh, a guy named uh, Jay O'Brien and, and Jeff own it. I know them very well, and I actually use them for a lot of stuff as well after my one year is up with clients. Uh, and they have a, a great campaign that, that they can set you guys up on. Uh, but, but you've got a gift. you got to love on your clients. If you don't love on them, then you don't love them. And if you don't love them, you have no business being treated great by them, right? Getting referrals from them, no business at all. And so do you have a similar program for realtors that you work with and that are you, are you gifting your realtors as well? So yes and no, we don't have a, an established gifting program for them because they'd be getting gifts constantly, right? I mean, because we once we get them, then, you know, but they get attached to the marketing campaign. So it's like they're also giving the gifts out. Okay. And we don't have our logo on the box for a purpose, right? It's because inside the letter states that it's from both of us. So the big value add is that they're also being attached to it and we're better together. And, and I tell them up front, right? quite honestly, I said, you know, I'm trying to lock you in by doing that because if you get a referral from that client, I want to, I want you to be well aware that it came because of me. Yep. Right. And, and I want that referral. So it's all tied together. And, and then the value add is also, Hey, 70% of the time we're getting the very first offer accepted in the toughest of markets. When the market's not even tough, we're getting 90 
percent of our first offers accepted. And, and that has a lot to do with us, you know? That is so. incredible. Dino, this has been an absolutely incredibly valuable episode. Thank you for being so candid and for sharing with us. Um, I have, to, I don't want to, we could almost do a part two to this, but I want to be respectful of your time. Um, how do other loan officers find out more about you? If they're interested, how do people contact you? What's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah. Um, feel free to, to email me. I think that'd be the easiest. Uh, Dino, D-I-N-O at C-A, like California, C-A coastal loans.com. The name of my company is California Coastal Loans. Um, we're in Orange County, Mission Bay Hill, California, and uh, cacoastalloans.com. That is amazing. Well, again, thank you for sharing with us and for being on the show. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you.